آه دلوقتي هنبتدي نتكلم في بوينت تانية خالص بعد ما اتكلمنا على كل الفاكتورز كونتربيوتنج فاكتورز ان دنتال كارز اللي كان اتكلم عليهم ميلر اللي هو التوت سيرفيس والسبستريت والبكتيريا وكل ده التايم فاكتور معاهم طبعا آه والدنتال بلاك والديفرنت اكسبيرمنت كونفيرمينج الكلام ده والميجرمنت اوف ذا بي اتش انسايد ذا بلاك في الناس اللي عندهم هاي كارز انسيدنس واللي هو ستيفن كيرف وكلمنا على الصلايفا which is a regulatory factor وكل ال teeth are based in the in this saliva وكلمنا على succession bacterial succession أو microbial succession بس كده وكل ال reactions اللي بتحصل جوا dental plaque دلوقتي هنتكلم على classification of dental caries I think in most of you سمعوا عن ال الكلام اللي هنقوله يعني هنزيد عليه حاجات بسيطة قوي آه انما اغلب الكلام يمكن سمعته عنه قبل كده سو so, احنا هنعمل آه, two classifications آه, للدنتال كيرز اول classification هتكون according to the site of attack يعني any surface of the tooth is the affected surface آه, سمعتوا الكلام ده في ال operative definitely يعني خلاص اول حاجة هنقول ال pit and fissure care pit and fissure care I mean إن هو الكارز اللي بيبتدي في البيتس and fissures أول ما أقول pit and fissure أول حاجة بتيجي في رأسنا هي البيت and fissures في الأكلوزل سيرفيس usually of molars and premolars أو posterior teeth طيب هي دي بس البيت and fissures اللي عندنا لا عندنا other pit and fissures areas تانية فيها pit and fissures زي lingual surface of the interior teeth جنب السنجلم بنلاقي pit and fissures Uh, and it differs from one person to another, but we consider them pit and fissures. كمان في على buccal surface of molars قريب من الأكلوزل surface برضو في pit and fissures where caries can start. واللي بيحصل إن this pit and fissure they favor the accumulation of food and hence the accumulation أو إن يتكون عندنا dental plaque بالsequence بتاعتها بالcaries. اللي بيحصل هو الأسد production of acid under the dental plaque in clothes a relation to the tooth surface dental plaque keeps it there for a long time because of the diffusion limiting membrane function of this dental plaque and so on until decalcification of the tooth takes place and depending on the pH whether it will remain acidic or uh, this patient has good oral hygiene habits or he brushes his teeth or stops eating between meals, then the pH will go up again uh, to seven or even more. And at this point, recalcification or precipitation of uh, calcium salts takes place again on this tooth surface. So in the pit and fissure, actually what happens is exactly like what happens in the smooth surface. Usually uh, the first sign is the uh, white etch uh, or the incipient care takes place. But unfortunately, we don't see that because the pit and fissure is too narrow and deep. So what you see is the second step right away, which is the brownish discoloration. So in the pit and fissure, you don't get the chance to see the white spot or the incipient care. So what you see is the brown discoloration, which is uh, roughness of the surface due to the loss of mineral salts and then it becomes a little bit uh, less harder than the tooth structure and it attacks or attracts I mean and different pigments and debris from the oral cavity accumulate in this area giving this brownish discoloration okay uh, then if the caries extends uh, to the dentine but the surface is still intact, meaning that the acid extends at the amylodentine junction down to the dentine. It will cause some loss of the salts from the dentine and will cause some kind of caries in this dentine, which is not uh, infected. It's uninfected dentine caries. And in this condition, if the dentist is good enough, he'll notice that this tooth will give a bluish white discoloration, noticing that there is undermining on this, under this intact enamel surface. And usually the enamel surface is the hardest part of the tooth because it gets salts 
uh, calcium salts from both sides from the oral cavity to be precipitated on this surface and also from the calcium salts removed from the deeper layers of the tooth and also passing by the enamel it gets precipitated in this layer so it gets calcium salts from both ways and so that's that layer even if the tooth has uh, caries is the hardest layer of the tooth and uh, until this layer is broken there is no bacterial uh, infection inside the tooth bacteria cannot get inside the tooth so pit and fissure caries it occurs on the occlusal surface of molars and premolars on the buccal and lingual surface of molars usually near the occlusal surface and on the lingual surface of the maxillary incisor Caries may be detected clinically at the pit and fissure as a brown or black discoloration. This is the first sign. Sometimes it's, it's just a stain. So you need to use your probe to see if it catches in this area. And sometimes you need to take x-ray. As we said, uh, the bite wing is one of the good x-rays, efficient x-rays to detect a caries, whether interproximally or uh, under an intact enamel if this, there is loss of salts in the dentine and the, in the dentine under the intact enamel you can see the difference the relative changes in the x-ray picture and then the enamel if it if the the care is extends it will give the bluish white color so the enamel directly bordering the pit and fissure may appear opaque bluish white when 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 does this happen when it becomes undermined by dental cares so this picture is just to show how narrow this fissure is so actually by clinical examination of the patient it's so hard to notice the early changes the incipient caries the loss of minerals with the white edge in this uh, pit or fissure it's too 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 narrow this is the typical picture of what you see when you discuss or when you examine a patient with pit and fissure caries, the brownish or blackish discoloration because of the accumulation uh, of pigments on top of the softened or uh, the decalcified layer of enamel next to it. So this means that this, the minerals or the, uh, has been removed from the dent from the enamel causing very minute openings allowing only the acid to reach the dentine causing decalcification or this early caries lesion here pointing uh, showed by the arrows pointing at it without the enamel being uh, broken so the enamel is still there here again it's pit and fissure caries and here, pit and fissure caries in premolars and in uh, incisor teeth at the lingual surface of incisor, incisor. Here is the bluish, black bluish discoloration we talked about before, denoting or meaning that there was extension of the caries up to the dentine causing this discoloration. So here the enamel is actually undermined at an, any point it can undergo fracture allowing the entrance of the bacteria and destruction of this whole part of. So the enamel which appears clinically we just summarize what we said like in these points. Why does the enamel which appears clinically sound can overlay or overlay an extensive caries dentine uh, lesion. So this may be due to, first of all, as we said that uh, we can start like with the direction, um, where, well, we, I'll start by number four, topical fluorides on the tooth, in the toothpaste and in the food that we eat and the calcium uh, salts in the oral cavity and from, I said, from the caries process or the removed parts of calcium from the inner layers of the tooth, all will be precipitated in this outer layer. So this outer layer of enamel will be the hardest layer. So topical fluorides, particularly in the toothpaste, help maintain the integrity of the enamel undermined by dentinal caries. 
So it's fluoride plus the other calcium salts reprecipitated in this outer layer of enamel. Also, the direction of the enamel rods let the, the acid go in, uh, it starts in a very small point and then starts to increase in size due to the direction and the branching of the enamel rod. Then when it reaches the amylodentinal junction, which is the least calcified layer, it spreads so quickly laterally. When it spreads laterally, it allows the dentine, first of all, to be the affected over a wide area at the amylodentinal opposite from the enamel. So it starts being attacked over a wide area and it takes the direction of the branching dentinal tubules. All this with the intact outer layer will help caries caused by, of course, up till now by the acid, only bacteria hasn't got in there. So caries to spread under the enamel while the enamel still, still looks intact. Unless uh, the dentist is so efficient, he'll notice like the uh, opaque bluish discoloration of the tooth, uh, meaning that it has the, the acid has reached the dentine and caused some changes in the dentine. Here is a typical picture showing the enamel intact and a large dentinal a carious lesion caused just by the action of the acid. So this part here, we call it uninfected dentine caries. Okay, and if you compare it with the other side, the other side is completely intact. Same thing here, the enamel is totally intact and this area is radiolucent, more than radiolucent compared to the other uh, normal uh, side of the tooth. So this was the Pitt and Fisher caries. We're still talking about the classification of dental caries according to the surface affected or the site attacked. So first we talked about the Pitt and Fisher caries and we summarized where can this Pitt and Fisher caries start. And we mentioned why the changes of color of the tooth uh, from brown to uh, opaque uh, blackish blue color happened. Again, in the smooth surface, what is the smooth surface areas? First of all, it is the interproximal caries, proximal caries, the one that we said can be only sometimes detected by a bite-wing x-ray because it's very hard to be seen uh, in the oral cavity when examining a patient. And it appears also, as we said, in the gingival third of the buccal and lingual aspects of the tooth, which is called the cervical caries, or in other words, class 5 caries. Here you can see the very early changes in this tooth by the action of the acid produced by the bacteria. You can see the incipient caries or the chalky white uh, spot, which you cannot see in the deep fissures. So this chalky white discoloration is the very early uh, thing you see, followed by uh, the yellowish or brownish discoloration, uh, which takes place when this area is more rough and then it's roughened surface because of loss of the minerals, and then it became, becomes softer than the normal enamel and starts attacking or attracting, sorry again, attracting the pigments and food debris from the oral cavity and giving this brownish discoloration. Again, and if this lesion extends, the acid from this lesion produced from this lesion extends again under the amylodentinal junction or reaches the dentine, again, it will give the opaque blackish white discoloration while still the outer layer of the enamel can remain intact for the same reasons we mentioned before. So. As we said here in this slide, as the caries progress, surrounding enamel becomes bluish white. The surface of the lesion becomes roughened before frank cavitation occurs. And before this cavitation occurs, there is no bacteria inside the tooth. Bacteria is just the acid of the bacteria. Here is a picture showing this is smooth surface caries. But here it became brownish, so it's the second 
a step of the carrier's process, becoming a brownish in color. Here again, this is rough surface showing some white spots, which is the incipient carrot, and brownish discoloration on the roughened surface uh, of uh, the uh, cervical part of the buccal surface of a tooth. Again, here are other examples of smooth surface caries, which is the cervical part of interior teeth. Interproximal caries, which is another uh, location for smooth surface caries. And here is class 5 or cervical part of the teeth, uh, which is another form of, again, of smooth Again, smooth surface caries on the cervical part of molars. All this we call cervical caries. And then we talk about cemental caries. Uh, when we talked about the bacteria, we said that the bacteria usually uh, found in cemental caries or the one which is responsible for cemental caries is usually uh, the actinomyces because it has proteolytic activity. So. Unless the tooth, the root is exposed, there won't be caries in the cement. So usually the first site to be attacked or affected with caries is the enamel, followed by the dentine, and the cementum only happens, it only happens in the cementum if there is a gingival recession and the cementum is exposed. So it occurs when the root surface is exposed. Uh, Usually it appears as a brownish discoloration and in cementum the caries gives this brownish discoloration so quickly and it goes there, uh, it, 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 it increases so quickly because the cementum is less, less calcified and then the dentine and it has a big amount of collagen fibers inside. So it gets discolored, gives the brownish discoloration, gives a large cavity because it spreads quickly through the incremental lines and the collagen bundles in the cementum. So first demineralization takes place and then bacteria and acid invades along the, uh, the collagen causing loss of layers of the cementum and finally giving a saucer shape. So fracture and loss of the successive layers of cementum, the fractures are usually parallel to the root uh, surface resulting in a shallow saucer shaped cavity. This is how it looks like. So here we have recession. You can see the gingival recession and bone is bone loss as well. This is a big part of the root here exposed. And then this patient shows a saucer shaped cavity here in this lower tooth, which is cemental. Again, here the arrows are pointing at a lesion of cemental caries and the bone shows loss with recession of gingiva. Here is the clinical or how this caries lesion looks like. It looks like a brownish large saucer shaped cavity. The reason for that is that the cementum contains a big number of collagen fibers, cremental lines, and so it spreads the caries and the acid and the bacteria spreads quickly through these layers causing shipping away of layers of the cementum and reaching the dentine, giving this big, large, saucer shape, brownish. Recurrent caries. Recurrent caries is the caries that occurs around a previously made restoration, either on the sides or below this restoration. And the reason for that recurrent caries is that the caries has not been efficiently removed or the cavity was not well treated or sealed well. So the definition for recurrent caries is the caries that occurs around the margins or at the base of a previously existing restoration. So all these pictures are examples of uh, recurrent caries around or below, like here, here again, restoration. Here you have a restoration and part of it is fractured from the amalgam, the filling material, and you get this cavity. And all these are examples.
the current carried ar around previous restorations. Again, here in this molar and in this, uh, I think it's a three molar or a canine. So, number five is second, secondary enamel caries. So they used to use the word secondary to describe recurrent caries, but this is not right. So, the recurrent caries we just talked about around uh, or below a previously uh, retained tooth with a restoration or uh, an existing restoration, they used to call it secondary caries. But, when, but this name is wrong. Secondary caries is applied to secondary enamel caries. So what we mean by secondary enamel caries is that the caries that starts from the amelodentinal junction and attacks the enamel from below in the organic part of the enamel. So after the acid reaching, uh, following the direction of the enamel rods, reaching the amelodentinal junction, spreading so quickly at this amelodentinal junction because it is less calcified, attacking the enamel over a wide area, and then it starts attacking the enamel itself from below, from the amelodentinal junction upwards. In, uh, we can call it retrograde caries or secondary enamel caries. So the definition for that is, it is the caries produced by the penetration of bacteria along the amelodentinal junction allowing the enamel to be attacked from beneath. And so it becomes undermined and then easily layers of the enamel can be shipped away and an actual cavity can be formed. As I mentioned, they used to call uh, secondary enamel caries. Currently, the term secondary enamel caries is frequently used to refer to a recurrence of caries at the margins of a restoration, but this is wrong. So they used to call the uh, the recurrent caries, secondary caries, but this is not a correct name. In this picture, we see here, this is the enamel preserved in a way by the stain. I mean, not all the enamel salts are removed because usually you can't see enamel in uh, an H&E slide because it's mostly made of uh, calcium salts which get re gets removed or dissolves during the preparation of the slide in acid. But here part of the enamel is left. So this is the enamel, this is the amelodentinal junction, and this is the dentine. And here you see the separation between the uh, enamel and dentine and care is attacking from below upwards in the enamel. Same thing here. Caries goes through these organic parts of the enamel to attack the enamel from below, from the amelodentinal junction after spreading at the amelodentinal junction. <clears throat> so now we're done with the classification of dental caries according to the site affected. And uh, to summarize that, we talked about the pit and fissure and how it looks like, and the smooth surface caries, the cemental caries, and the reason for that caries, and the recurrent caries around a previously uh, done restoration and secondary enamel caries starting at the amelodentinal junction, attacking the dentine from below and causing undermining of this enamel. Attacking, I mean, sorry, the enamel from below, uh, from the dentine side, from the amelodentinal junction and causing undermining of the enamel. Uh, the second thing is that we, classi we can classify dental caries again according to the rate of attack. Uh, so this is number one is acute caries, which is the quick or the fast type of caries. And usually this rapid type of caries affects young age people with wide, large open dentinal tubules. And there is no defense mechanism taken or done from the tooth sides or the body side so there is no sclerosis to stop this caries from taking place so this is very common in children and young adults it is very rapid and usually it shows uh, early pulp involvement with no defense mechanism this type of caries can sometimes affect many uh, teeth at the same patient many uh, tooth surfaces even the teeth that are immune to dental caries, which are the lower incisors. 
So these, all these teeth are affected by the caries, and this is what we call the caries. Again, here all the upper teeth are affected, and you can tell if the child teeth here are still erupting, starting to erupt. Uh, also, we can see this same rampant caries in some patients with impaired salivary secretion. And we mentioned that before when we were talking about the saliva. Uh, if these patients are exposed to radiation, head and neck radiation, which may affect the salivary glands, and the saliva will be very minimum, causing uh, rampant caries to affect multiple teeth in this patient's oral cavity. Uh, another cause might be Jugerin's, which is an autoimmune disease, affecting the salivary glands, and the salivary glands are replaced with inflammatory cells. We'll take this in details with the salivary gland diseases, causing impairment of the saliva and thus rampant caries as well. This, all these teeth are affected with caries. It's acute, it's quick, fast affecting a number of teeth here. Again, and an x-ray showing multiple teeth affected with the caries. There is a syndrome known as baby bottle syndrome, which is a type of uh, rampant caries. We call it rampant nursing caries or baby bottle syndrome. This type of ram rampant caries affects uh, babies uh, which take the nursing bottle and they sleep with the milk in their mouth. So usually they get caries in multiple teeth, usually the maxillary four incisors and the first molars are the main teeth affected uh, in these babies taking this bottle and we call it baby bottle syndrome. So it's a kind of rampant caries. <clears throat> Again, here rampant caries affecting many teeth and causing here, I think this is uh, an abscess here on top of one of these. So now this is acute caries or sudden caries affecting multiple teeth, usually involving the pulp so early with large dentinal tubules and usually affecting a young age. Chronic caries, now, yani if you mention chronic caries, it's the caries that you see in your clinics. I mean, most people show chronic caries and not acute caries. Acute caries takes place only in certain conditions, as we mentioned, but what we know or what we're more, we're more familiar with is the chronic caries. In this type of caries, it is very slowly progressing, usually. And acute caries affected young age, this type of caries usually affects older group age people. Uh, the tooth have time to protect itself, the pulp, I mean, pulp part of the tooth, by sclerosis and by the deposition of reparative dentine to limit the caries process. So this is a type of uh, chronic caries affecting smaller teeth. Here again, this is chronic caries. It is, sorry. When you examine this cavity, it's completely hard and sound. So what you do is, if there is hot, uh, soft spots, you just remove them very slowly, and then you just fill or uh, put uh, make a restoration for this tooth. Here again, you can see a large cavity which is easily cleaned by the food and by rinsing and by the toothbrush. And it had caries before, but it stopped at this point. And the best thing to do is restore this tooth. Another thing uh, which can take place is that when you have a proximal, large proximal cavity or caries tooth, and the reason for this caries tooth is that food is retur uh, retained between two neighboring tooth, teeth, I mean. So you have two neighboring teeth with the food entrapped in between, causing caries in one of these teeth. If one of them is extracted for any reason, so the other surface will be exposed to the oral cavity and food will not be retained there anymore. And this can be another reason for uh, arrested caries in a proximal surface in a molar tooth after extract neighboring teeth. What about in enamel? In enamel, we said that the first thing that you see or you notice in a patient uh, 
with early caries is the white edge or the incipient caries or the white spot due to the decalcification of the tooth surface by the action of acid. At first, it is hard. It's not yet soft. After a while, it becomes soft, rough, and, uh, and then becomes brownish in color and then allows the acid to pass and the acid reaches, uh, goes through the enamel and reaches the amylodentinal junction and all the sequence of events takes place. But if you tell this patient, change your habits, stop eating between meals, stop eating sticky food, brush your teeth regularly, change your oral hygiene habits, change your eating habits, this caries can stop at this point. And this is the arrested caries at uh, an enamel surface, early smooth caries, early incipient caries. So when the dentist tells the patient to change the oral hygiene habits and eat healthy, it can stop at this point with remineralization of this part by the fluorides and the calcium salts inside the oral cavity. Uh, this one in this picture, this is a type of arrested caries, but it, it caused like a uh, discoloration of the teeth. Sometimes it's just white.